Aldean Westfield. This is another entrance into the campus. And as you can see behind me, a huge stream of police and law enforcement here who are set up. They have a huge blockade going down here. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a car kind of sideways parked right there with its roof uh, open. Mm -hmm. That car, the hood rather, is open. That car, I'm told by law enforcement, contains one possible suspect in this shooting. We do not know his age, don't know much about him, but we have heard from several witnesses here as students came running down the street. Many of them saw and heard uh, gunshots. They saw people running. They saw some of the wounded. And one of them is going to tell us his eyewitness testimony right now. Roberto, tell me exactly what you saw. You were in the library, I understand? Yes. I was studying in the library, and then out of nothing, I just heard five gunshots, I think. And um, at first, some people came running inside the library, but I thought it was nothing because I just saw some other people. They kept starting like nothing happened. And then after that, I saw the librarian. Uh, she came to us. Uh, she she didn't want us to go outside. Uh, she, they kept us in there for like 30 minutes. Um, after that, they evacuated us. Um, um, I was While you were there, you also yeah. saw a few things. Describe to us what you saw. Yeah, when we were getting out, uh, I saw blood in the floor. There's a, there was a lot of blood in the floor. There was one guy inside there. Um, I think he was like a librarian or some or something. Uh, the employee he was, of the college, yeah. we understand, was one of the people right, who was injured. Right. He, I think he was shot in the leg. He was in the floor, but he wasn't dead. No, I don't think no one, no one died, but he was, he was injured. Was he talking? He was conscious, we know. Was he able to speak with the people who were assisting him? Um, I don't know. I, they just told us to keep, move, to keep moving. I just saw him that he, he was conscious, but he were wasn't. Were you able to see another young man? I understand a very short distance from there, there was a second person who was injured and lying there being assisted by paramedics. Yeah, there, there, were, there was one outside, one inside the building and one outside the building. And beside him, I think there was one guy in handcuffs. Uh, I think he was supposedly, I was talking to, to the other people, supposedly there were two shooters. Okay. And the guy Katie, that you saw Katie, who was wonder... injured, the one who was on the ground, how seriously injured was he? This is the younger victim. Um, I didn't clearly see, they just told us to keep moving. Katie, I, I wonder if you can... Melanie Lawson is asking me a question. Yeah, Melanie, I, want, I want you to stand by just for a second here, Katie, because we also have, uh, at this point, a taped interview with another witness who may have seen something similar to your, uh, your witness there. So we want to roll that right now. This is a student who was inside the library. Because a lot of them were quiet, and some of us were crying and trying to talk, call our parents, call our, let them know. I was trying to call my sister because she's at school. She's still in there. So I was trying, trying to talk to my sister most of all, trying to get hold of her where she was. So you did see the, the, the people? Yeah, there were some people shot on the floor. There, we're looking for we, we, we got heard. multiple people who saw them. So it sounds, Katie, as though, much like your witness there, there were several people who were shot. Did he see two? Do I understand that? Yes, and that's exactly what we're hearing from multiple witnesses. We talked to about 15 or 20 people right when we arrived here, wanted to get as much information from the eyewitnesses as possible. All of them were very consistent in their description. They said, many of them said they saw someone who they believed to be a gunman running from the library into an administration building directly across from the library. Many of them also described seeing one person on the ground with a leg injury who was still apparently conscious and breathing and aware of his surroundings. That was described to us a couple of different ways, but always as an older person, someone who worked at the university, perhaps worked in the library building. The other person who people saw on the ground was a younger man who had been shot more seriously, who was unconscious. His eyes were closed. He was not responding. And he was also being tended to by, by paramedics all during this time. All of these folks who were in the library described hearing the exact same thing, pop, 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 pop. They heard about five or six shots being fired. At first, they weren't sure what it was. And then immediately, they said the school administrators were saying not to move, to stay in that building. They kept them there for about a half an hour. And then by the time we arrived on the scene just a few minutes later, all of those students were running down this street just trying to get away from the campus. So it appears that at least that area was secure enough that they felt they could let students leave the campus. Of course, we don't know who they have in custody here. We know there's one person in this car directly behind me. That's a Harris County Sheriff's deputy vehicle, the white one right there that has 
the hood up. Mm -hmm. We're told by Harris County Sheriff's deputies that there is a person in there who is a suspect. That is what they're referring to that person as. They haven't given us any information about any other suspects in this case. We have heard multiple reports that people believe there was more than one shooter, but we cannot confirm that. We've heard nothing official, uh, nothing from the college, and nothing official on the record from any investigators. Just what these deputies are telling us right here. Of course, they're getting the information from their superiors. So that's what we know right now at this entrance to the college, Melanie. All right, Katie, thank you so much. And I do want to ask just a couple of quick questions. One, do I understand from your witness that this was taking sure. place outside, the shooting happened outside, not inside the library? So I have two different accounts. One student believes that some of this happened inside the library. One of them believes that one of these victims may have been shot inside the library or very close to the entrance. The other eyewitness accounts, and that's the majority of them, say that this happened outside of the library. I understand that there's a little bit of an area, maybe a grassy area, between these two buildings where both of these victims were. One person is of the opinion that they moved one of the victims inside to get him away, potentially, from whoever might have been out there at the time. They were being treated inside the library in the lower level. Most of these students were kept upstairs during that time. So we're still not sure, still really putting together a lot of the details, but we know that it happened near this library building for sure. And Katie, the other question I have for you, did your witness receive word uh, on his phone, a text, an email, anything like that from the college notifying him what to do, or was this all simply word of mouth? Not a single witness.